Well, I attempted to do a little video there. Seem to be having some technical interference of sorts. Let me try it again. Uh, the Lord's been speaking about how to increase our success in getting answered prayer. And I discovered something which really uh, got my attention. And I want to share with you now, and hopefully I won't get uh, dropped when I try to do it. Let's take a look at it. Jesus says to his disciples, he says, I've called you friends because all things that I've heard from my father, I've made known to you. This is powerful. The friends of God know the secrets of God. And then he says, I chose you and appointed you that you should go and bear fruit. This is a pretty powerful statement. You did not choose me. You didn't choose your assignment. I chose you and I appointed you for the assignment. Now, therefore, you're called to go and bring forth fruit in, get this, the thing I've appointed you to do. And your fruit will remain. Whatever you ask of the Father in my name, he may give it you. Now, here's the revelation. Just jumped off the page at me. When the Lord gives you the assignment, if it's really a God-sized assignment, it's bigger than you and you know it. You're dependent on God. You're desperately relying on the anointing and the leading of God. You're keeping yourself clear from any kind of thing that could corrupt the connection because you're humbly, desperately depending upon God to do something beyond your ability. That's a God-sized assignment. Now, what's interesting here is Jesus says, you didn't choose me for this, but I chose you. That should tell you that you might not feel as though you're the guy to be doing something or the gal, but God says, I chose you and I appointed you. That word appoint in Greek is interesting. It means to place in a specific location. God put, God put you in proximity to the needs, to the people, to the circumstance, to the nation, to the time in history in which he has an assignment for you. You got you with me on this? And then he goes on to say this, you didn't choose me, I chose you, I appointed you and put you in a certain position so that you could go and bring forth fruit and your fruit won't be temporary, it'll be permanent. So that whatever you ask the Father in my name, he may give it to you. Now, I always took that promise, whatever you ask in my name, that I'll give you. And how many of you know, you ask a whole lot of things, doesn't always happen the way you thought or doesn't even necessarily happen. But I got, I got a revelation here. I remember... It was years ago, a preacher named Bob Mumford said, if you want to increase your batting average at home plate, stop swinging at everything that comes over the plate. You're not called to swing at every need. You're not called to swing at every issue. You're not called to swing at every situation. And you can actually get fatigued in an information overload age. We got so much awareness of so many things. And of course, on so many fronts, there's so much fatigue that you wear yourself out. God is saying, I want you clear on the fruit that you're called to bear in the assignment I have for you because you pray in alignment with that assignment and the appointment that I've got for fruit on your life and I'm gonna manifest. The promise is pray in accordance with the appointed task and you'll increase your batting average. So we really should be asking the Lord, the, the helper, the Holy Spirit whom the Father has sent to teach us all things. We should be saying, Lord, what is it that you require of me this year? Specifically, what fruit are you seeking on my vine? Put your marriage down, put your children down. A lot of people mistake this. They, they, they go off on a big crusade for the Almighty and they, and they miss the things that God says, these things you ought to do and not leave the other undone. What fruit do you want in my, my physical health this year, my body? What do you want from me? Uh, you want me to lose that way? You want me to start doing something to condition myself for the for the race? What do you want me to do in my marriage? What do you want me to do with my children? There's appointed fruit. Now you start praying in alignment with the appointed fruit. You're going to start getting a lot more answered prayer. Then you move on. Where, wherever you work, God has an assignment. I don't I don't know if you are aware of this, but your work is part of your mission field. So wherever that is, it isn't what you do in the secular in order to go be spiritual someplace else. You've got to learn how to bring the kingdom into the place you work. 
I used to literally walk around corporate offices in Babylon, New York, and I used to pray in the Holy Ghost, lay hands on desks, anoint certain desks with oil, and I, I literally put, I took prayer claws and stuck them under certain chairs, and I had a, uh, it was a hoot, because I was bringing in a harvest and leading people to Jesus in the workplace, getting into trouble now and then, that was to be expected, trading blows with the devil, but my appointed fruit was to influence the company I was in. <clears throat> and then when the day came when I left that, <clears throat> never occurred to me that years later I'd be teaching how to do business supernaturally. And I didn't go to do business supernaturally 101. There was no course. I was doing it out there because I was appointed. Then when that season ended, another season opened up. I had different fruit appointed. I was working for a church and my appointment was to serve that pastor and serve that church, serve those people. And that's where I started getting answered prayer in a different area. Then I was ministering to people. They had afflictions and problems. I wasn't a professional counselor, but the word of God is, is sufficient. And a lot of times it's demons. And I learned to cast out demons, break generational curses, and, and release a, a prophetic influence so people could war according to prophecy. Had a whole different acumen that was developing. When that assignment ended, the appointment was for another location, another job. And, and I didn't always get this because I would take on a lot of peripheral things and wasn't always getting answered prayer in everything I did. But I look back and I see the fruit that was there was in the assignments God gave me. Go back and look at your life. Where did you have fruit? And you'll see where the assignments were. Do this to, to condition yourself to see the pattern of how God does things. And now the word of the Lord is for many of you to go and bear fruit. Now the go means to be active, to step out, take initiative. Someone said to me recently, and it just like spoke like a rhema. They said, do you ever go up to uh, one of those electric doors, the grocery store? And when you get in proximity, the door opens. Well, the Lord is going to be bringing open doors in 24. But in order for the door to open, you actually have to go where the door is. You can't sit there in your car staring at it and say, well, when the Lord opens the door, I'll go into the grocery store. Well, yeah, that's a, that's a dumb illustration. But if the door symbolically is to go talk to uh, about that job offer you want to get, or if even the raise, or maybe even that new opportunity somewhere, go into proximity with the open door. Then the door will open. Now, the Bible says there are, sometimes there are many adversaries. Don't assume that the door isn't going to have enemies. Matter of fact, if it's great real estate, the devil's already there. He's going to try to keep you from getting in, but the door will open. I remember one guy when I was in sales, he had a remarkable success rate getting to the manager of the company. Now, normally they have these things called moat dragons. We call them, you know, moat dragons back then. They were secretaries who would be outside. And when you came in, you had to go to them and in order to get through them to go to the office. Uh-oh, I'm seeing a slow connection here. Hope we don't lose you. Well, this guy was so smart. He bought haagen ice cream. He figured out what uh, got some flavors that were really great. And he came with a haagen ice cream and said, I just need 10 minutes with the manager and I'm out of here. By the way, I brought some haagen for him. Well, the secretary didn't know what to do. She couldn't say, take a seat, wait, he'll get back to you, give me your name. She goes in and says, there's a guy out here with haagen -Dazs. The manager came out kind of laughing. What? I just need five minutes with you. By the way, I got this cup of haagen right down the street here. Well, the manager gave the haagen and listened to the guy. He had an incredible success rate. That was kind of like, shrewdness and wisdom, but the, the attitude was, I'm not saying no because there's many adversaries. I'll get past the moat dragon. Does that make sense to you? So we come back to this again. I chose you and appointed you to go and bear fruit that whatever you ask in my name, he may give you, the Father will give you. And then it says, and this I command you, love one another. Is somebody here? Annabelle? I heard the door open. That means dinner's on the table. I command you to love one another. Why would that verse on loving one another be attached to this thing about I've appointed you to go bring forth fruit and that whatever you pray for, you're going to get? Well, the reason is this, that if you can keep yourself in the love of God, then the force of faith operates better because faith worketh by love. So you've got to guard the climate into which answered prayer takes place. Answer prayer takes place more when you're swinging at the ball that God sends over the plate because it's connected to the fruit for this season. So you start praying in alignment with the present assignment. You start hitting the ball better. You get more answered prayer. And the secret is keep yourself in the love of God, looking for the mercy of the Lord Jesus Christ unto eternal life. Keep yourself in a place free from strife. This is a year of strife. Oh, my goodness gracious. 
strife. I'm, I, I have more strife in my head with people saying things. Oh, they shouldn't say that. And then people are writing things to try to correct other people from saying things they shouldn't say. It's like, it's like uh, the thing is just going to be one big problem, people getting gunked up in strife, fighting about the strife. And I have to keep myself in the love of God because I'm bearing fruit in the assignment God gave me. Does that make sense to you? I pray in the name of Jesus this year that the Holy Spirit of truth will reveal to you where your present fruit is. And I believe it's bigger than your wife and your children or your husband and your work. I only went to those levels. I think the assignment is to feel beyond, but I want you to start to go over there and ask the Holy Ghost, what fruit do you want in these areas? And then agree with your spouse, if you're both believers, for the fruit in those areas. Ask them, what is God telling you? You might be surprised. The two of you are hearing the same thing. There's power of agreement. Now begin to say, Lord, where's the need that you're calling me to meet? Now you'll find something out. The problems that persistently cross your desk come into your life are frequently God sending a messenger to you saying, help this situation. When the apostle Paul couldn't figure out where to go because God kept shutting doors on him. God shut doors on the apostle Paul. He wasn't in sin. He wasn't missing it. He was just, he was on go. And God said, not that one, not that one. And then he had a vision in the night of a Macedonian, come over here and help us. There's a somebody needing the anointing you've got, somebody needing the talent you have, somebody needing the word that you carry. And what you want to do is you want to be in a receptive place where that person can come across your, uh, your life. I remember one time, and I'll get out of here now and end and, and this message. I remember one time I was in uh, Michigan and I was... I was seeking God and studying a guy by the name of Blackaby on, on um, uh, what was it, experiencing God. And he would talk about how what you want to do is pray and get into a love relationship with God so that he can give you an invitation to join him in what he's about to do. And while I'm praying and getting my message ready to go preach, there's a knock on the door, and it's the lady is coming around there to, uh, to, to clean up the room. I mean, this is back in my days of, zealous innocence. I probably wouldn't have myself alone with a lady coming to clean the room now. But anyway, I was really irritated because she was interrupting me seeking God. And then the Lord spoke to me and said, she's actually been sent. She just lost her mother. Pray for her. And I said, hey, what's going on in your life? She was crying. And she said, well, I lost my mother. And so I prayed for her <laughs> and she went out under the power of in the hotel. That, now, this was, could be an incriminating situation. Preacher alone with a woman on the floor. Well, I opened up the door, and, uh, and I thought, well, maybe I better exit. I got her back on her feet, and she, she said, I, 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 need, I, I need more of this. I said, you better go to the church I'm preaching at. Well, I got her to that church, and she got saved that night when I prayed for her. She got slain in the spirit. She got up and went and joined that church, all because somebody interrupted me when I thought I was doing God's thing. And the interruption was from God. So I'm going to say to you, as I sign off right now, you need to like this, you need to share this, you need to let other people know about this. This is a word in season for somebody, and I'm giving it to you now. By the way, what do you think of the beard? Think I should keep it? I'm thinking I might have to get rid of it by the 19th because we're doing that that uh, that health summit down there. And some of, you, some of you need to know about this. The Lord told me, start the year off right, start the year off strong. You're going to reverse aging. You're going to take away the aches and pains. You're going to, you're going to start to, to do some things dietarily and nutraceutically and various other ways with collagen. And I started listening to Dr. Jordan Rubin and, and various other doctors. I said, I'm going to have you all come and teach our people about how to have supernatural longevity the 19th and 20th. You want to go to lancewallet.com forward slash summit. I think that's the name of it. And you can get the live stream. I mean, it's cheap. You're going to have doctors talking to you. It's going to cost you more to go make appointments with them. I'm going to have a full two days, not a whole week, two days, learning from Christians that understand longevity. Oh, I see balloons popping up. I got to get that app. I don't know. How does somebody do that? That was so cool. All right, so go to lancewallet.com forward slash summit. Get on the live stream. I'll be talking to you while I'm down there because I'm going to take notes on everything I'm learning because the Lord said, I want you to be strong this year because we're going to be going to seven states, seven swing states. We're going to be racing through those states. Mario and me have a, have a whole harvest machine. Thousand souls saved in every city. And a thousand volunteers ready to go take the battle to their region, their state. And we're specifically targeting the 19 counties that are the most significant counties to turn America around. Bam! So stay in touch. Keep in touch. Would you share this with your friends? I'm fighting this terrible spirit of, of uh, it's not a hallucination, it's a suppression. 
and it's unfortunate um, because you know you're, you're, it's it's just kind of like people don't don't like what we're saying these days, and there's different ways they can silence you. But I am will not be silent, and the word of God will not be bound. Share it. God bless you, Father. I pray in Jesus' name for the uh, the supernatural clarity for everyone hearing me on the fruit you're seeking in the next six to twelve months and the assignment that you've got on these people by the power of Jesus' name. Amen? And you're gonna get answered prayers. God bless you. I read your comments. Prefer no beard? Virginia, my wife is in agreement with you. Hmm, no beard? Well, she was gone for three days visiting her mother and I grew it. And yeah, Charlie Kirk, I love Charlie. Charlie's gonna be joining us, by the way. Charlie will be joining us in some of those cities. You got a problem with Charlie, you'll have a problem with me because he's going to be joining us. Love the energy of those youth. Hallelujah. All right, catch y'all later. Talk to you soon, and I'll read your comments. Bye-bye.